make up your mind and carry it out. To make each decision a reality, one needs to draft a series of steps and plan the accomplishment of every one of them. For example, if someone decides to lose weight, they draft and plan certain steps for that purpose. This might look as follows: consult a nutritionist, specify how much weight one needs to lose, and in what period of time. Choose a diet, get a gym membership, etc. In the same way, when someone decides to achieve financial prosperity, they need to study the Word of God and to do it. So then, what does the Word of God say? Do not hurry to be rich. He who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. Proverbs twenty eight verse twenty. Do not worry, but seek the kingdom of heaven. Spiritual things. Then he said to his disciples, "Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have their storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds?" And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow; they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind, for all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, Luke, twelve, verses twenty-two to thirty-two. God does not ignore the needs of people. It is just a matter of the priorities of the people themselves. When a person literally puts the kingdom of God first in their life, committing themselves fully to Christ, and believes without doubting that their body is a temple of God, He will give them clothes, a car. And all other things necessary for good life, as all these goods are already provided by Him. Here is what I have seen: it is good and fitting for one to eat and drink, and to enjoy the good of all his labor in which he toils under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him, for it is his heritage. Ecclesiastes five eighteen. Be righteous. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from the death. Proverbs eleven, verse four. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. Proverbs eleven eight. A person must be righteous in everything, from motives to actions. Be merciful and have love. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, What credit is that you to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. 
condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Luke 6, verses 28 to 38. Many people focus on the last sentence. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. God will never trust any wealth to an unforgiving person who has no love. Each person must keep in mind that they will reap what they sow only in case they fulfill the whole passage quoted above. Your tithes. Offerings or gifts to God are important, but they are voluntary. However, giving the 10% of one's income is obligatory for each Christian. From the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way we have robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Malachi 3 verses 7 to 11 we give our tithes not only for the house of God to abound with food, but also for heaven to be open over us and for God to rebuke the devourer, so that we have no losses. And most importantly, by giving our tithes, we demonstrate our faithfulness and trust to God. Always so, regardless of circumstances. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25 He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God, who makes everything. And the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Ecclesiastes 11 verses 4 to 6 A person must sow in any situation, and even more during an economic crisis because heaven is the source of his financial prosperity. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Psalms 126 verses 5 to 6 Well-being of people whose hope is in the Lord does not depend on the government, or the economy. God's people live by supernatural faith. Remember the story of a prophet's wife. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you should shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels, and set aside the full ones. So she went from him, and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, 
And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt. And you, your sons, live on the rest. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Let us also remember the story of the poor widow who believed the word of God and gave her bread to the prophet despite the fact that her country was in economic crisis caused by drought. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, Indeed, a widow was there, gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup, that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of the oil run dry until the day the Lord sent rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses from 8 to 16 Without faith it is impossible to please God, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6 God gave faith to each person, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Romans 12, verse 3 Nevertheless, we need to develop that faith. Each person has muscles, but to develop them, they need to exercise. Faith is developed through reading the Word of God. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, verse 17 let us lift our eyes to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12 verse 2 And learn from him. God wants his people to have complete faith in his word and to live well. That is why he promised to give seed to the sower. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 to 11. It is God's children who finance advancement of the gospel. The devil's aim is that God-fearing Christians remain poor. How a person who has nothing or barely scrapes by can finance advancement of the gospel around the globe by making TV shows, Christian websites and high-quality Christian movies, printing books and showing support to the anointed ministers who bring the gospel of salvation to the nations. How a Christian who lives in need can fulfill Matthew 25, verses from 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, 
come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Those who trust God can strengthen their faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Jude twenty. Each believer who gives offerings to carry out God's will on the earth must believe in the law of sowing and reaping, and in the power of the seed. The seed sown by faith in good soil will certainly bear fruit. Do not be deceived; God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those. Who are of the household of faith? Galatians chapter six, verses seven to ten. Completely submit to the will of God. God decides where a person shall live, and He opens a person's eyes to the calling they shall enter and serve Him with. There was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Abimelech. King of Philistines in Gerar, then the Lord appeared to him and said, "Do not go down to Egypt; live in the land of which I shall tell you." Genesis twenty-six, one to two verses. Isaac did not go to Egypt. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks, and possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Genesis twenty-six, verses twelve to fourteen. Do not be proud. God hates pride. For thus says the high and lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones, Isaiah fifty-seven verse fifteen. Pride keeps people from receiving God's blessings. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs sixteen eighteen. Have expectation. The person who believes in his sowing speaks words of faith. And does works that prove his faith pleases God. God expects our worship with demonstration of our love and faith. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, "Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman." Has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Luke seven, verses forty-four to forty-seven. Then he said to that woman, Your feet has saved you. Go in peace, Luke seven fifty. God gave people so much in both spiritual and material spheres, and He has expectations for everything He gave. If God had no expectations.
from people. The Bible wouldn't say, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Hebrews eleven verse six. Faith itself shows expectation. The woman who had the issue of blood for more than twelve years expected healing, and her expectation manifested through faith was answered. Now a woman having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, "Who touched me?" When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, "Master, the multitude throng and press you, and you say, 'Who touched me?'" But Jesus said, "Somebody touched me, for I perceived power." Going out from me, now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, "Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace." Luke eight, verses forty-three to forty-eight. When a person sows much, they must expect to reap much. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Luke six, verse thirty-eight. Some preachers say, "Give out of love for God, expecting nothing." It is a grave error. The Lord of the universe and our merciful heavenly Father created man in His image and likeness. So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created them. Genesis 1:27. He wants man to be like Him in everything. God is the greatest giver. He gave man His image and endowed them with His own characteristics. Today, people make amazing discoveries, create ingenious works of art, and invent unthinkable things. How is it possible? The only answer is that God created man in His likeness. Not only God created man in His likeness, He also gave people this marvelous planet of exceptional beauty, full of treasures. He gave salvation to mankind, which is the greatest gift. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians two, verses eight to nine. Through works no one can deserve salvation, which is freedom from the demonic curse and death of this world, in order to spend the eternity with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To give this salvation to mankind, God gave His only begotten Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. John three sixteen. God gave His Son, expecting to adopt us. God gave salvation to men, just as each person has a nose, a mouth, eyes, etc. They also have faith, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Romans twelve three, God gave His word to nurture and strengthen our faith. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans ten seventeen. In addition to all this, God also gave people the gifts of the Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit; to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit; to another faith by the same Spirit; to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit; to another the working of miracles; to another prophecy; to another discerning of spirits; to another different kinds of tongues; to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. First Corinthians, twelve, verses from seven to eleven. Through these gifts, we receive the extraordinary instruments that are necessary 
to bring happiness to people's lives. Furthermore, God also gave us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. Through Jesus Christ, God gave all these gifts to those who became His sons and daughters. He did it because of His love and with the expectation that by applying His gifts, they will help one another and reveal Him. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10 8. If God had no expectation at all and simply said, I sacrifice my only begotten Son solely because of my love for mankind, or I give to people the gift of the Holy Spirit, working of miracles, prophecies, etc., expecting nothing as it is only an expression of my love, how could people ever benefit from them? If he did not explain the purpose of the gifts, people could even misuse them and harm themselves or others. Actually, God gave everything having a higher purpose in mind and high expectations. The Lord of Lords fulfills his dreams and desires through giving. He gave his only begotten Son and received us in return. He gave the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he keeps receiving in return healed people and nations that find.